Hello everyone and uh, this week on the Stitch Journal I've got really an in-depth tutorial about how to do long and short stitch, thread painting, silk shading, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm starting the pansy and I'm showing you how to chase your threads, how to mark it out and also how to lay in your stitches to get them to look just perfect. And I've only done two petals because I really wanted to get the idea across of how how to do this yourself without uh, just from a reference that's the idea anyway so I hope you enjoy it so today is all about silk shading thread painting long and short stitch whatever you want to call it the, the technique is the same it's coloring in an image using thread I've always just called it long and short stitch or silk shading because that's how uh, it was always called when I was growing up and when I learned how to do it. I have got a reference image of the sort of colours I want to use so I'm going to keep that reference image in front of me so I can see that all the time and I'm just going to show you the colours I've picked out. Now at first glance you think okay it's yellow and purple and maybe a bit of white that's it. If you have access to a few different colours then it's definitely good to get a few of the same sort of a colour. So here I've picked out a white, a cream, a pale yellow and then the yellows are going from sort of a light to a more orangey colour. I may not use all of them but at least I've got, at least I've got them. That's what I'm going to choose from for my yellows and for the purples um, I'll just discount that one for a minute I've gone with um, I've got five colors here again these are all stranded cotton I don't know which company they're from so I've got quite a bluish one here and then a sort of they're not quite dark to light but they're the best I could come up with from my box this one's got a bit of a reddish tinge and so it may be that that one um, is a quite good one to use to to put a bit of warmth into the colour. We'll see. Now I wanted to use a dark purple, which is this one. That's a really dark purple, but it's not stranded cotton. It's a flower thread. But I've put it in because that is the perfect colour for what I wanted. So it may be that I use two strands of that and just pretend it's a stranded cotton. So use what you've got. If you've got pearl cottons, you could do this in pearl cotton. I very nearly did it in cruel wools, but I just didn't have the range of colour that I wanted to use. And so back on the good old standby of stranded, stranded cotton. I'm trialling a slightly different setup with my hoop today um, because I sometimes struggle to get everything in the angle that I'm after. So I've actually got my hoop, I'll show you, I've got my hoop secured at the top today but that means that it, that's the way it goes. So you normally I have it on an angle like that and I work from the side facing me but because it's on the top I've got to go with flat but I'm going to hope that it makes for a better angle for you and that I can still manage because my camera the camera frame is here and I actually have to put one hand through the camera stem this one to get to um, to get to hold things so we'll just see <laughs> I'm going to uh, hope for the best so first things first, I've got the image. I'm going to be colouring this in with the threads. And when I look on the image, I've got these two little pieces here. Like there. And then sort of the hole of where the, the nectar is. And so I've gone and just put them on, just for my own benefit. And I've put them around that, that dot there was really what that was all about. But what I'm really looking for, I'll just turn around so I'm looking at this flower here. What I'm really looking for is the direction that the veins and the petals are going. And they're definitely sort of all heading towards the centre. All of these lines are heading towards the centre. 
So that gives us a clue of what we have to do when we're doing our stitching. All the lines have to head towards the centre. And if you need to put them on, then you can do so. I don't normally put them on, but I'm going to do it just so you can see the process of how you go making your own thread uh, picture. The next thing I need to look at is where the colour transitions are. So I can see that these edges here are a lot lighter than the middle. So I can put that on. I can sort of just draw myself a line. I sort of, I'll, I'll sort of take it the way that the edge of the petal is and draw myself a bit of a line on that shows me where I want to transition from a light to a dark. On here, these have quite a light edge. I don't think I'm going to do quite such a light edge, but I'll sort of just draw it in, give myself a chance. Just there. And then these lines on top, there's no point in putting them in yet because all of the embroidery needs to be done first. But I could be putting this little, they all seem to have a little purple piece here. So I'll just pop that on. I don't think it's going to be too bothersome. And so the next thing to do is just start. I'm going to get myself a fine needle, but it's got, I can see to put my threads in. And I'm going to be using two strands of stranded cotton. And I'm going to start with, definitely want that to be the darkest one. I feel as if this is the one I should go for. I'm going to start with this. I've got about 18 inches of thread and I'm going to take two strands out and I will be taking them out singly and recombining them in my needle. In this way you'll get a flatter, nicer look to your stitching. So I've got my two strands in my needle and quite often I will do this type of work with one strand. It seemed to feel that six would be just a bit too um, too thick for it. But two, three, four is going to be fine. And um, I've got two in today. I'm going to start with the very back petal and work from the back forward. That also allows you to give a bit of uh, depth to your, to your stitching. And so if I don't want to start with a knot, I can start on the top, I can leave a little tail, I can put a couple of stitches in, because um, I just start with a knot because it doesn't really matter, does it? It's, it's your stitching, you can do what you like. So to get this in, it's long and short stitch. I'm going to come up just on the outside of my drawn line. And I'm just going to lie the very first stitch in. And I'm going to be aware of where, which way all these lines are going. Now, I know that quite often when you see tutorials on long and short stitch, they will be laying them in all beautifully, one next to the other, all the way around. And I'm coming up just a thread apart. But it doesn't always lend itself to being the best way to do it. I feel that you should just go very lightly back and forward, back and forward. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to space my stitches out quite a long way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be aware of the lines that I want to make. And so I'm going to audition the thread across and see, I don't want it to go there, do I? And I don't want it to go down here. I sort of want it to fan. So I'm going to audition the thread. I'm going to put a long stitch in there. I'm going to go back up to my outline. I'm about an eighth of an inch along going to put a shorter stitch in. I can audition it if I want and put my needle down alongside and I'm going to work my way right the way round. 
I'm not trying to go, I'm not trying to fill up the whole place. I'm just trying to get a sense of where my stitches need to be. And in this way, you sort of you sort of get the stitches all going in the direction that, that, that you want them to be. If you try and do it all at the beginning, especially if you're not very experienced at doing this type of work, then what happens is you get your and the, the slant of your stitches can wander off and then you don't notice and then you don't know how to get it back again. So although this is long and short, they're very far apart, but it doesn't matter. I'm getting the sense of the petal. And each stitch, when they say long and short, you don't have to keep all the long stitches the same length of long or all the short stitches the same length of short. It just means that every stitch is a different length. You can make two long ones together, two short. I can go shorter again, look. I can do a little short one there if I want to. And I can go from there to do quite a big one. And go right the way down. I'm still getting the sense of the, the way the petal lies. So I'm going to work my way right the way along this edge and quite often if I'm if I'm doing this by myself and this is a good practice you can get into if you are also going to be working in a hoop um, you can use your dominant hand underneath and your non-dominant hand on top and that is the way I would normally work so I'll try and do it as long as the camera's not in the way. So my dominant hand is the one that can find the underneath and my right hand's going to come up and find the next place to go down. And then it saves your hand coming up and down all the time. And you'll find that your non-dominant hand is definitely good enough for finding the next space. But on the camera, it's probably not as easy to see, which is why I tend to not do it. But it's definitely a, an easier and nicer way of working, I think. Right, I've come all the way round. So now I'm just going to go back the way I came. But now I've got the lines of the previous row they're all helping me to keep the, the threads fanned into the shape that I want them to be so all I need to do is keep coming in with another stitch and as long as I make sure that it's not the same length as the stitch I've already laid in whether it's longer or shorter that's all I need to do and you can see how nicely that's going to lie in. And you try not to crowd your stitches, but you don't want to leave spaces if you can. And just by putting that initial row in that's very spaced out, look how easy it is to go back and fill in the spaces. And you don't have to think which way anything's going. You've already done it. You've already done that work. I'm, now, I'm going to finish that thread off. Oh, I pulled it out. In fact, I'm not even going to bother. I'll just lie it down and stitch over it. See what I mean? I'm, I don't do the right thing, you know. That's because I'm not trained, I'm just self-taught. I found my own way. Although I learned from books, and so I learned the proper way. But over sort of nearly 60 years of stitching, you just find, you just find your own way of doing things. And I feel that if I can stitch over it and secure it, it's no different than if I just put that on the back. As long as I'm not going to see it, it doesn't matter. 
And you just start to get a sense of where the length of the stitch should be. I'm going to make that one a bit longer. And you just need to be about... Well on this I'm doing it probably every thread because this is a bit of a thicker weave. It's not that fine. It's just tablecloth linen. It's more like you need to be the the width apart of the thickness of the thread that you're using. So I need to be apart by the thickness of two strands of floss. Now this first layer is going around and I'm not particularly thinking of when I'll change colour but I don't want to make my length of the stitches too long. I need to be able to stitch into them with the next layer down or the next colour that I'm using. All of this applies whether if you were stitching a fox or a, or a rabbit you would still, the lines would be going in the direction that the fur lay and you could still do exactly this in fact that is the way I would stitch any long and short stitch at all and you can see how that's filling that space up quite nicely and I hope you can see how nicely those two strands of thread are lying they're just lying so nicely and that is because I separated them and recombined them in the needle. I used to think, years ago, I never did that. As a child, I would never have been doing that. I suppose I was quite a lot older before I saw in a book that somebody was saying recombine. And you think, what, what the point of that? There's still two strands in your needle. But... Obviously, having then experimented to do it, you can see immediately the difference. And it's, how many, it's like a 10 seconds, 20 seconds to do it. Um, and the benefit to your work is really huge. So those new stitches among you, if you haven't been bothering to recombine, just have a practice and see what difference it makes. And then it's up to you. You can choose whether you want to bother to do it or not. I definitely do. And here I am almost back to the beginning. So this time I'm going to go, I'm going to come up within what I've just stitched. And take the line onwards. Now actually I'm just going to fasten that off. Okay, I'm up with my next my next thread. I'm going to do one more row of long and short. And so now the stitches can be whatever length you want them to be. And you come up within the stitches you've already put down. And take the line further. But you can still see where your stitching lines are. Some of these are going to be finishing because they're going to come up to that piece there. But I'm now going to go into the into the previous stitching. And come up for the next one. And quite often I split the stitches of the one that I'm coming up to. And I also what I do is I quite often work up and down. So sometimes I'll come further down and work back up into the stitching and there is no right or wrong way to do it I don't think you can work from your unworked fabric up into the stitching and you can work from the stitching down onto your unworked fabric it's the same it doesn't matter don't get bogged down in what, what somebody says is the rule. There isn't a rule. The rule is enjoy what you're stitching, relax and just see how beautiful this can, this can come out. 
So I'm just taking this line further down and quite often I'm saving thread by going up and down. So that was quite a long stitch, it finished there. If I take it back up into here, there's a lot of thread underneath. And I'm just into the habit of saving thread from years of not being able to buy any. So I go up and down. So I'm going up into there, just leave that there to get stitched over. And then I'll come along and come downwards. And that is just, nobody's going to tell once it's stitched that that's what you've done. Cut that off in a minute. I'm just working up and down, putting in. I'm not even needing the reference at the minute because I know that I, ne I needed this purple to come further down the flower petal. Audition the line, put in your needle. And as you can see, I'm probably not doing a whole line anyway. I'm just working along. Wherever I come up, I make sure that the, li the stitch line follows the line that I want it to make. And so far, I've only used one colour. But I'm going to bring in another one on the next round. Or the next row. But the rows sort of blend together. You can't really say which rows which. Some of them end up quite long, some of them end up quite short. The whole point is you shouldn't really be able to tell. And it's such a lovely thing to do. And to see your colours coming when you're just starting from a plain base as opposed to a printed piece of fabric. I think that's really lovely. And that you know that every colour choice has been yours to make. There used to be a name for um, embroidering over printed fabric. I'm going to have to look it up. It's quite an old, an old historical um, technique actually. I remember doing it when I was younger. I used to cut out, I used to embroider on top of the printed fabric. Maybe I used to cut out and applique them. I can't quite remember. So I'm going to look for that. I'm going to look for that name. But I'm just hoping that I'm going to show you that it's not as difficult as you think to just do it from scratch without using somebody else's printed um, design. So on the next layer I want to introduce another colour and it's this reddish purple. Now it's quite a bit of a colour change there but the advantage of using two strands is that I can do a bit of a colour change in a gradual way. So I'm going to use one strand of this red, reddish purple and I'm going to use one strand of the purple I've already used. And that should give me a delicate colour transition. And it should warm up this colour a little bit. And let's see how that goes. So I'll put these two in my needle. So here I have the two strands together. And hopefully I'm going to be able, it might not be obvious straight away, I'm going to finish this whole um, petal with this double colour in my needle and I'm just going to go back in into where I've already gone and if I feel that I need to go further up with this colour I don't have to stay here where it's finished I can go if I wanted to go right up there I can I can go wherever makes me happy to put that colour in and I definitely, or whether it's picking up on the camera or not I don't know but I can definitely see that colour change
just by using one of each colour. It's going to give subtle variation. And length of stitches I'm using, uh, probably about, uh, let me see what's the biggest one being, probably about half an inch or a centimetre and a bit maybe at the very maximum. I'm going to, I'm staying longer on each petal because I think it's really important that you see just how a couple of petals come together. So I'm going to probably do maybe I'll do just the purple ones today and leave the rest of the flower to finish off next week. Just so you can really get the sense of how to do it if you haven't done this before and I know there'll be plenty of you that'll be old hands at it but hopefully you'll not find it too boring and just like that we're about finished in fact this thread's just going to do fine just so I'm not um, wasting it because I'm unlikely to re-thread that piece it probably would have just gone into my thread jar so I might as well just lay some stitches in wherever they go they'll probably get worked over but it doesn't matter And leave it at that. So before I finish this petal what I'd like is to have some very dark and I am just going to use this flower thread and I'm going to just use a single strand of it actually so you could just be using one strand if you're stranded and I'm just going to darken this very bottom by just putting some stitches and now, now I'm stitching over the top this is extra it doesn't need to be done but I've got the dark thread so I might as well make it as best I can and so I'm just going to darken this little piece up with this very dark purple and here I am just looking looking at my reference photo and what I can also see are some vein lines. I'll show you them. Just put another another stitch here. That really has uh, brought that lovely. So on on the pictures, I can see that there are. There are vein lines here going through, might not show on my photo here, but I'm sure if you look at your own photo of whatever you're doing, you will see the darker little lines. And so because I've got this thread in my needle already, I'm actually just going to come up at the edge and I'm going to put some small lines just coming through at the edge and it'll just give the sense of it. I'm not trying to put um you know make them look realistic in one respect i'm just going to let there be a sense that the vein lines are there and i just need to follow the direction of the stitches that are already there you can see how dark that thread is now just going to put some tiny ones in. I don't want it to I don't want to make anything look stripy. Just a sense of it. And trying not to make it too even. Don't want them to be like little soldiers all evenly spaced out. Just loose. I'm just going to finish this petal off 
with this paler mauve colour and I have put one strand in my needle and so I'm going to come up here you'd probably be working the opposite way around to me if you're right handed and so I've got a choice I can either make a little tiny chain stitch I could do a little tiny running stitch I'm actually going to do a split stitch even on just one strand of thread I can come up and split that strand and make quite small stitches these are less than quarter of an inch and it's just going to it's not going to be too obvious but it's going to make a nice pale edge to the to the petal actually I might change to stem stitch I'm just I think I am I'm changing to stem stitch I'm a rebel changing stitches mid flow and your your flower might not have an edge to put in but if you want to define it you can you can use the same color I could have gone in with the purple that I used for the rest of the body of the petal or I could have used the darker color but I know that they quite often have this little light edge and so I'm going round with it and that one is finished I really like how that's finished that edge off so I'm going to finish this thread up and come back with the first colour again so I'm back to the original colour and I'm going to do this petal here I've got three strands in my needle because what I'm going to do is lay in a little padded edge and that's going to just lift this this petal forward from that back one and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just be in from the edge a little bit and I'm going to lay in some split stitch which is all going to be covered up but what it'll do is it'll raise the edge of the long and short and so I just need to stay away from the very edge because that's where my long and short stitch will be going down and I'm going to split stitch right the way around this edge I'm not going to make too big a stitch I'm going to follow the shape I've actually changed my needle to another one that had a slightly larger eye but I couldn't get the three strands through the needle I was using before and so I'll just split stitch all the way around this edge and you can see I'm about a couple of millimetres away from my drawn in outline So here I am back to start again and I'm going to come up just outside of the drawn line and now my stitches are going to lay over the top of this and because of that it'll just raise that edge up and it should hopefully it should be making um, this petal really look like it's in front of this one you see that as I get round but at the beginning I'm just going to go around exactly like I did before laying sort of like a, it's like laying a skeleton in a skeleton framework so again some long some short 
but they're all following those direction lines. By spacing them apart, you find that you won't be swayed by the stitch that's come before, laying it in sort of parallel. You'd follow the lines that you've drawn on to help you, instead of thinking that they has to lie alongside. It sort of frees you up to put the stitch in to the correct angle. So having finished my framework, I can now go back in, just like I did the last time, and fill this edge totally in. Remember, when you think of long and short, it's more accurate to think of longer and shorter. You don't have to make a short one followed by a long one or vice versa. You just have to make one of a different length than you've just done. And on the edge, oh, this is another bit maybe I didn't say before, on the edge I don't go up and down like I did when I was filling in. I always come up on the edge. I never go down on the edge. Um, maybe you can do, but I just don't think I ever do. I always come up on the edge and then down into the into the, the space that I'm filling in. Whereas once I am filling in, I feel free to go up and down as the fancy takes me. I've now got the um, flower thread and the red thread together so I'm having another transition I might still put some dark things right at the bottom I'm going to start right in the bottom here I'm just going to lie some of these darker colours right up through see how it goes now because I've already got my petal totally filled in Wherever I'm going now is just where I want the colour to be. So I'm just going to work up and down and around. Seeing if I can get the, another shade coming through. I'm finishing on the top here. I am super careful not to cut my threads. And so the last finishing bit for this petal is to take the single strand of the bluey purple back round the edge and so that's just on the other side of what was the padding of the, the uh, split stitch and this is just going to define this edge just go into those little gaps that are left there These are quite small stitches, just a couple of millimetres. And I can feel the difference there. And as the, as the flower gets completed, you'll see the difference between that very flat edge and this lovely rounded one just bringing that petal forward ever so slightly and I'm going to be bringing these forward and forward again. I think maybe that's where I should leave it today. Um, I was thinking I would have got on to these two but I think it's better that you have um, a more in-depth uh, little tutorial on putting the long and short stitch in in the first place and then next week these two are going to get padded up with the felt. So I think I think maybe that's going to be it for today but it's a nice start to the pansy and I think it's going to just look super. Well that was a little bit of in-depth um, long and short stitch tutorial. I just wanted it to be that if you hadn't done it before I'm showing you exactly what you need to do to get your embroidery looking good and if you're more experienced Go down to one thread, 
you will see a difference. It will be finer. You'll get more um, more detailing. But two strands or three strands will be a really good start if you're a bit wary of going down to a single strand. But whatever you do, um, it'll be worth it. Just taking it easy and looking at your reference picture all the time and just having a thought about how many colours you can start off with and shading them in. So I think there'll be more shading to do on the yellow petals next week. Uh, but the, in the end, I used three colours on these petals, on the, on the purple petals. So I'm happy with that for the size of the flower. That's fine. And so next week, the yellow petals will sort of hopefully complete this page altogether. Um, and so that's that. I hope you press the like button if you've enjoyed that and watch another video if you want to do that too and send me a comment tell me how you're getting on i really enjoyed and if you're on instagram absolutely um show me what you've done because i'll be interested in seeing it i'm not really very good at looking at everything um it's the same with kofi i really really appreciate everybody who supports me on kofi um i just don't physically have the time for making any more content because uh, the 45 minutes or so of the stitching that you've just seen um, took me, well, a, a definitely a good afternoon and then a day's worth of editing. It's just, it just takes too long. I don't, I don't have any time to, to make more content at the moment anyway. So I do my best and I do thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for supporting me in wherever you are, whether it's messages on Instagram or comments on the videos or on Kofi or wherever. Um, just keep it coming because I like to hear what you're doing as well. Thank you very much. Oh, and I'll be away on, I'm going away on Saturday. So where Sunday's video I'll have pre-recorded as with all of next week's videos. I'm getting them done before I go away. And I'm doing a lovely workshop on, actually on my birthday on the way to Scotland. So that's going to be interesting too. Wendy and I have booked in for something in Jedburgh. And so we're looking forward to that. And I might have a little bit of film about it or I might not. I'm not particularly intending to film it. Um, but you might see little snippets when I come back. Thanks very much and I look forward to seeing you next time you come and visit me. See you next time.